Welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In this video, we'll explore how to make the tree view widget in Tkinter editable. In the last video, we made a tree view widget. We made a table from that widget that was displaying product information. It's right here. In fact, let me run this. But the problem with this table is that it's not editable. For example, I want to change the price of product C. I can't do that. I can't double click on this or something and I can't change it. There's nothing I can do. This is a read only table. Now, obviously this is very limiting and you ideally in many scenarios want a table which you can edit in real time. So how exactly do we do this? How exactly is this possible? Well, there is a solution that I recently came across on Stack Overflow, a pretty unique solution. So I want to share it. What I've basically done is adapted the code off I found online to our scenario, to our product data scenario, just made some modifications and added a whole bunch of comments because I'll be sharing this code at the end of the video. So you guys will find this useful, these comments in case you want to modify this or extend it. Okay. So let me just run this code now and explain how exactly we made this tree view widget editable. Now it's important to understand first that the tree view widget is actually natively not editable. It has no such feature. Yes, we can edit it through the code, as in we can update the column names, we can update the rows and stuff, add, remove rows through code, of course, but we can't, there's no way for a user from the user's perspective, not the programmer's perspective, there's no way for, for the user to actually modify this table. There is no double click option, no right click and then click edit or something, no context menu that's going to pop up with an edit cell option, no. Um, what you can do instead as the programmer is create an illusion that you are editing the tree view widget. Okay, let me just actually get to it. Basically, what we've done, the innovative solution that I found online, is that when you double click a cell, like if I double click this tree view cell, what we can do is extract the coordinates of that click, then find out which tree view cell was clicked, then spawn an entry widget at that location. So when I double click this, and now you can see, it looks like the cell has become editable. Now, don't be fooled because what's really going on behind the scenes is that we've spawned an entry widget at this location on top of the tree view widget. And we took the text from the tree view cell we took the 8.95 from the cell, inserted it into the entry widget, highlighted it, you know, with the blue with the blue highlight, and now it looks like it's being edited. See, it's a very you can't even tell that we've done this. It's it's that good, it's that good of a replica. And now when I press enter, like I just make a I just make a change, like um, 9.99, and then I press enter. We just delete the entry widget, but before we delete the entry widget, we take the value from it and update the cell. We update the cell, the tree view cell, which we can do already through code, right? So let's just take a quick look at the code now. Won't be longer than two or three minutes. So first we have the initialized UI method. We just do all the UI stuff here, create the tree view, insert the data packet. And we also bind the double left click event to this method, okay? This method is, which is going to be responsible for spawning the entry widget at the location of the click. Okay. So first we just have some code to delete any existing entry widgets so that we don't end up spawning multiple of these by accident. Then what we do is get the column ID, a column name and row ID based on the coordinates of the click. If the row ID is zero, then we return because we don't want the header to be editable, then what we do is use the row ID and column name, which basically gives us the cell. If we know the row and we know the column, the intersection is the cell. Then we can use the bbox method to, um, you know, return the X and Y position, which is the top left corner of the cell and the width and height of the cell. Okay. Now we use this information in our code to get the text. First of all, no, okay, that this doesn't have anything to do with the text. We can do that anyway. We just need the row ID and the column. Okay, we can use th these two pieces of information to get the text. Then we spawn the entry widget and then we place it, okay, at the X location and Y location. 
and use the width and height. Same width and height as the cell. It needs to be the same dimension so that it fits right over it and looks like we're editing the tree view itself. Okay, so the entry pop-up over here is actually this class, this entry pop-up class. It's basically a regular widget, but we've, we just added a few extra things onto it. For example, when it gets initialized, it's going to become focused immediately, and it's also go going to uh, select all, the select all method, which basically highlights everything inside of it. The, the way that you saw it with the blue highlight, right? Uh, let me just run that again. But the way this is highlighted, 12.99, the way it's highlighted in blue, that's what that does. Then, you know, this is pretty obvious. We insert the text into it. We bind many different events to it. The enter key, so when we press enter, the on return method, what it does is updates. This, this code, is these five lines, is responsible for updating the tree view itself. Find the row ID, uh, then find the list of row values then convert that to a list because this returns a tuple. Then we can, um, you know, self.get, which returns the current text in the entry widget, which is basically self.get here, would represent the new updated text. So we update the list with this new text, and then we uh, do use this method to update the value. We update the value of the cell with this list, okay? Uh, let, me, let me just put this a different way. We get the list of values, from the tree view, we update it with the current value of the entry widget, and then we put that back into the tree view widget. Okay, then we destroy the entry widget. And select all method is, is basically just you know selects all of the text. Self dot selection range zero to the end, to the end of the entry widget. So select all the text, and yeah, that's pretty much it. There wasn't really much to it if you think about it. Um, it's mostly just about a concept that you need to keep in mind. Hope you guys found this video interesting and useful. You can find a link to the code in the description below. There's a link to my website where it has all of this code. Okay, so yeah, be sure to check that out.